Welcome to To Kill a Mockingbird pre-reading research instructions for honors ninth grade literature. This is your annotated bibliography research and research presentation assignment directions. Um, so what are you going to be doing? Well, you're going to be creating an annotated bibliography and a research presentation. And so what is an annotated bibliography exactly? I'll definitely show you examples in a minute, but let me give you my two cents on this because it's important. So back in my day, which wasn't that long ago, might I add, and also a few years ago at our high school, we were doing an index card process where you research and you put your information on index cards, like you put your citation on one index card and then you'd put your information on another index card and then you just line them up in columns and rearrange them and whatnot. Um, and it's just a lot. And to me, it's old, it's outdated, because when I got to college, we did not do that. And I've helped several students who are in college now in English 1101 and 02 classes who have not had to do this old, outdated index card process, but they have had to do annotated bibli bibliographies, which, in my opinion, has replaced the old index card trick. So you're going to be creating an annotated bibliography. You're going to be given a topic and you are going to become the teacher of that topic. So what is the objective of this assignment? Well, you're going to produce independently um, an annotated bibliography. You're going to research your topic from the 1930s. To Kill a Mockingbird is set in the 1930s. It was written in the 1960s, but it is set in the 1930s. You're going to research that topic and make sure that you understand the time frame of the 1930s, and then you're going to create an annotated bibliography for that topic, and then you're going to create a presentation on that topic to teach to your classmates. So, yes, I understand I am not there. So, how are you going to present? Well, you're going to be presenting twice, essentially. Um, you're going to upload your presentation into Flipgrid, and that's where I'm going to grade it. You can do a Flipgrid at home presentation, that, and you can submit that one to me, and then you can present in front of your classmates. Um, either way, I'm going to be grading the one that you put into Flipgrid, okay? So, again, you'll be doing an annotated bibliography and a presentation for your classmates. So in your assignment section in Google Classroom, you will find this handout. And I've put your steps down here. I'm a very step-oriented person. So first, number one, you are going to identify your topic. I want you to write your topic here or type it. doesn't matter. Um, just make sure you understand your topic. Um, some of you are going to have events. Some of you are going to have people. Um, either way, just make sure that you understand your topic. Some of these topics are very sensitive to the time frame. For example, Emmett Till, that's a very gruesome court case. It's about the death of a young boy. So if you have an issue with certain, I don't know, issues in the world, then you're going to need to make sure that you get a topic that is maybe a little bit more sensitive and not upsetting. So, and if you do get a topic that's a little bit more upsetting that has gruesome images like such as Emmett Till's case, then I ask that you be respectful and you do not put any images that would compromise someone's, you know, moral ethics, okay? Um, also, there's a lynching and lynch mobs. Those are topics too. So let's be professional about this and not, you know, compromise anybody's um, integrity, okay? All right, so moving on. So you're going to identify your topic. Then you're going to begin researching your topic. So here's the kicker. You need at least five sources. Out of those five sources, one must be a book. The other four may be articles obtained from credible sources such as Galileo. So what I want you to do, I recommend finding your book first since you're in the Media Center let Miss Geis help you find a book. Um, and then you need to begin looking for your internet sources. Now, do not go to Google and type in your topic because that is not an academic way, a scholarly way to do research. Let's find out how to do a scholarly research. So this is how I research too. To this day, this is how I research. 
So you're going to go to Galileo, and this is how you do so. To Galileo, you're going to go to the high school's website. So you're going to go to bremenhigh.com. Then you're going to go to the Media Center website. And then at the top of the media website, media center website, you'll see databases. And so Galileo is a database. So essentially it's like an online library for credible um, resources and articles, scholarly articles. So you'll click on Galileo. And then you have to, I've already logged into Galileo on my computer, but you're going to have to find your school, and then it's probably going to prompt you for a password. And Miss Geis has those passwords for you guys. You'll type in the password, and then it should bring you to this search engine. And so let's say I have the Scottsboro trial, because that's a really important um, topic for To Kill a Mockingbird. Part of the Scottsboro trial is in To Kill a Mockingbird. It's To Kill a Mockingbird is based on part of the Scottsboro trial. So... I would click search. And then you can see um, these right here are sources that were found for the Scottsboro trial. Um, and again, you may not need all of these. You're not going to need all of these. You're going to have to narrow down the ones that are the best choice for your research. Um, you can narrow down over here. Peer-reviewed articles, scholarly journals are probably going to be the best bet unless it's an ebook. Um, you can narrow down the date. You know, I think sometimes the most recent is going to be, according to my professors when I was getting my doctorate, anything within like a 20-year time frame, like recent, is good. Um, that just means it's been updated and it's relevant. You can narrow down here by type. Um, and another thing I think you guys are going to like is, let's see, I'm going to click on this one. Okay, so here, let's say I want to use this ebook. I can go over here and I can email it to myself. I can save it. And you don't even have to save the whole thing, you can save certain pages of the book. And you can even cite it. So I think this is what you guys are going to like the most. So you scroll down. Remember, we do MLA format. So you're going to scroll down and boom. Look at that. It's nice and beautiful. And it's done for you. So you just copy and paste that into your paper. Okay, so this goes on your works cited page. And I'm going to go back to my results list. I want to show you guys something else. Let's say I'm going to use this ebook. You can click on the PDF full text and it gives you the chapters over here. You can save some of the chapters. You can save the whole book, which would take up a lot of space. Um, but again, you can also search words, I'm pretty sure. So you just click on the chapters and go through and search. Um, and then sometimes it provides images. So go back to your results list because I know some of you are going to have to cite images. So related images here. And boom. All right. You have your images and you're going to have to find it doesn't cite it for you. So you're going to have to find it down here and put your citation together for your images here. But that is Galileo, and it is definitely a credible source. So when you research your topic, we just discussed Galileo. Now we're on step three, gather your information. Um, you are going to ha understand more when I get to the annotated bibliography part down here. But So what are you looking for? Um, you're just looking for relevant information that's going to help present your topic. So... You know, I haven't given you any specific guiding questions here. You're going to come up with those on your own, like what's important about your topic. Well, first, you're probably going to need to introduce it. Who is it or what is it, etc. OK, um, number four, you're going to create citations for your annotated bibliography. 
then you're going to write the annotated part of your bibliography. So let me move on to what an annotated bibliography is. So the purpose of your annotated bibliography is to help you organize your research. So sometimes you'll be researching and you'll find information that is either useful or not useful. And this is how college professors do it. So my job is to help prepare you for the next level. So this is what I'm doing. Um, you're basically just going to evaluate the credibility of your source and how is it going to fit into your research that you're doing. Normally, I'm going to say when you do an annotated bibliography, you take that annotated bibliography and then you turn it into a research paper. Please understand that you are not writing the research portion paper of this. You're just doing the annotated bibliography, okay? Not going to torture you guys with a research paper paper, but you're just doing step one, the annotated bibliography here, okay? So um, once you have your sources, you're going to need to identify whether or not they're credible, etc. So how do you set that up? Well, it's going to look like your works cited page. You'll be creating an annotated bibliography pertaining to the topic you've chosen with your minimum of five sources. So how do you set that up? So paragraph one here, you're going to identify the summary. You're going to create a summary of the entire source that identifies the author's claim and the main pieces of support. And then you'll write a second paragraph, an explanation of what type of resource it is. Is it a journal entry? Is it a book, an article, etc.? Then you're going to give an evaluation. How is it credible? And then you're going to discuss how the resource will help you respond to your research. Um, so essentially, if you were writing a research paper, this would where you, be where you would write the information you were going to use in your paper. And I'm going to show you an example of an annotated bibliography. Here is an example of an annotated bibliography that I helped a student with. Um, yes, Han Solo, that is. Um, and this is over Dunbar's We Wear the Mask. It is a poem. And this student had to write a research paper. This is actually from his English 1101 class. I think it was at West Georgia Technical College. And he ended up collecting his sources. So first he collected this source right here, the skeletal effects of early treatment of class three malocclusion with maxillary expansion and face mask therapy. So what he did here was he put his citation and then he wrote his two paragraphs. Now, his paragraphs, you know, this one could be a little bit more meaty, in my opinion. Um, your paragraphs need to be at least five to seven sentences. But here he walked us through why the article was informative, what it's about, etc. Again, here is his other citation. And I do think that his paragraphs could use a little bit more meat in them, but um, his citation here is We Wear the Mask, Irony and Dunbar's The Sport of the Gods, and he actually talks about whether or not he can use this uh, in his work. He does that in several of his citations here, um, and he talks about the mask. Here's another citation. This one looks shorter, so notice how the citations are set up so you will basically put your citations on your document and you'll have your hanging indention here and then you'll start your annotated part under the hanging indention okay spacing is very important when it comes to an annotated bibliography again you'll have your header, your heading, your title. Um, your title can be the name of your topic, colon, annotated bibliography. Um, I'm not looking for a necessarily creative title on this assignment. So this is a really good example of your annotated bibliography. For assignment paperwork, um, I'll let you read through all the questions here that you need to have in your paragraph. But again, it needs to be five to seven sentences paragraph that's what the standard paragraph form in high school is 
Um, I've also included a document on how to read an academic journal article. So those are going to be the journal, art the journal articles that you find in Galileo in that database. Also, here's your rubric for this assignment. Um, this is a significant assignment. Your annotated bibliography is going to be 100 points. Um, I'm grading you on your format, your annotations, your design, is it laid out correctly, and then your conventional errors such as grammar, spelling, punctuation, etc. And then I've also included here your Flipgrid presentation rubric. Um, and I understand it's going to be a little bit different because I'm not there. So this will be how I'm grading you on Flipgrid. And I know the presence part of this is questionable. Um, you'll probably, I just want to make sure that I can hear you and understand you. Um, is it organized? Is your works cited page in alphabetical order? That's a biggie because a lot of students get to the end of their presentation and they're like, whoo, I'm done. Let me just put this information on here and it's not in alphabetical order. Um, do you know your subject? Again, you are the teacher of your subject. You're teaching your classmates. You're teaching me about your subject. Is the presentation easy to understand? Is it clear? Um, and overall, is it interesting? Um, is it is it is it good does you know do you execute your presentation in a good manner this is an example presentation on google slides this student did the end of prohibition and the 21st amendment um and this this presentation is okay like it's not it doesn't just blow me away um it doesn't have images but i think the layout is clean that's why i'm showing it to you um he really, he picked some good headers here. What is What was prohibition? He used bullet points. Make sure that you do use bullet points. If you put paragraphs on your presentation, that is very overwhelming for your audience. So again, use bullet points. Um, he used the 18th Amendment, bootlegging, 21st Amendment, then the prohibition. So I feel like chronologically his information was efficient. Um, Next, his works cited page. It's really hard to put a works cited page on Google Slides and have it formatted correctly. So I'm not going to be too much of a stickler on the format of your works cited, but do you have a works cited is what I'm really going to be looking for. Is it in alphabetical order? Um, you know, his hanging indentions are backwards right here, but I'm going to, I was very forgiving with that just because it is difficult to format it on a Google Slides presentation. I'm going to show you another presentation that a student did a good job on. Um, and this student did the gruesome case of Emmett Till. Again, I said this is a very sensitive case, um, especially some of the images that can be found with it. So, again, just make sure you're being polite for your audience. Um, but I like some of the elements that she incorporated into her presentation. So, she went into who was Emmett Till, and then she went in the next slide is the cause of death. Um, and then she looked at some of the court cases and the documents and her images. She used a lot of really relevant Im images that helps her audience understand and relate to the subject. She uses bullet points. Um, she talked about the results from his killing talks about the effects of his death, like, how, you know, we're still talking about it today, actually. She gets to that. She talks about the huge debate behind it because it sparked a lot of controversy. And years later, she breaks down a small timeline, which I think timelines are great. If you can put a timeline in your presentation somewhere, it really helps your reader understand. And again, here, this her timeline is not in the 1930s right here, she's talking about years later, like why we are still talking about Emmett Till here. And it says in 2018, the federal government announced they would reopen the case. I know they reopened this case. They opened the Atlanta child murders. There were several cases that they opened and Emmett Till was definitely one of them. He's also referred to in a lot of our hip hop music. So he is like the 1930s, um, example of you know what we have going on now 
um, with like Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, like, you know, the important cases that we have for the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I like her work cited page. I want to focus on that for a second. So she did something really smart and you can do this. I'm not opposed to this at all. She actually typed up her work cited, took a screenshot of it and then uploaded it as an image into her slideshow. Um, and it's very clean. I can read it. It's in alphabetical order. I mean, this chickadee here made a really good grade on this presentation um, because she went above and beyond. And it was her presentation itself and how she presented it was amazing. So, again, this is an idea for you to, you know, screenshot your work cited and then put it as the last slide in your slideshow. So, lastly... After you begin your visual presentation, um, you can choose PowerPoint, Prezi, Google Slides, Adobe Spark. You can be creative. Just make sure you run through, you ask somebody about it. Um, make sure it fit, fits into Flipgrid. I'm actually still learning about Flipgrid. It's a learning curve for me at the moment. Um, so just make sure that whatever method you choose fits into Flipgrid. Um, your presentation may not exceed five minutes and you guys may think that five minutes is a very long time but it's not when you have to stand up and present information in front of people and if you're long-winded like me i'm sorry then that's just not a lot of time so you're gonna have to make sure that you have very relevant information and you can use note cards you can practice i highly recommend note cards and practicing and so here's what your life is going to be like the next week and a half. Um, so Thursday and Friday, you'll be in the library. Monday, you'll be in the library. Tuesday and Wednesday, you're going to get research days. I'm not sure if you'll be in the library or my classroom doing research. Miss Geis can always wheel a cart of books into my room. It's not a big deal because she's awesome like that. Um, but then your presentations are going to be Thursday and Friday. And yes, I know Friday is probably going to be cut short a little bit because we've got the homecoming parade going on. But I really believe that if we effectively like work together, then you can present these um, presentations in a timely manner. I hope I covered everything. Um, I probably left something out. So thank you for bearing with me during this instructional video. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. You can ask Ms. Geis. You can email me. Um, I'll be available through email. And again, research does not mean going to the Google engine and search engine and typing in your information. It means being scholarly and looking up academic articles and actually opening a book for crying out loud. So anyways, have fun researching. Go forth and be awesome.